So in this video, we're going to talk about how to do a, uh, implement a single rotation in AVL3. So a little spoiler alert that uh, we'll be implementing the single right rotation. As I said before, if you're up for a challenge, uh, you can try to implement it yourself first. And if you do that, I guarantee you'll understand the AVL3 a lot better. Um, so if you want to do that, uh, feel free to do it. Uh, and um, if you if you later you know once you're done you can always come back and verify your implementation against what's presented here um, otherwise you know follow along and I'll try my best to explain how the rotation works in code and for the rest of the week you sorry for the assignment for this week you will implement all the rest of the rotations so okay so single right rotation Remember, this is the problem. This is the case we're in. This is one of the four cases, right? This is the left left case, and we're trying to rotate right to bring it into balance. And uh, one very important thing to realize is uh, this rotation really only changes two uh, references. The first one is the the roots left child, so it. It used to point to, you know, the left child, and now it it's going to point to tree Y, which used to hang off as the right child of node B here. And then the second reference that we're changing is the uh, left child of the roots. Sorry, the right child, the right child of the roots left child. And so it used to point to Y, but now it's actually pointing to the O root thing. Okay, so these are the two things um, that that we're going to change. So with that in mind, um, here here is actually the code, and I'm going to call it you know rotate right, and it's uh, you know given the sub sub tree root, which is again uh, note the a here. Um, I'm actually going to save. The subtree roots left child uh, into a variable called LC. So that's why you see the additional LC that is pointing to the subtree roots left child. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, uh, but I do it just, um, uh, you know, it's a little more, it's clearer to myself and also it saves me a little bit of typing. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is that we will take care of the roots left child. So remember, roots left child, no, roots left child, roots left child now should be pointing to its left child's right child, which is why. Right, so that's why the, the roots left child now is the left child's right child. And that is, you know, uh, we just updated this edge or this reference here. The next step is the other edge that we were talking about. We're going to try to take care of the left child's right child. And now it's the right child should be pointing to the old subtree root and that's what this line is doing okay and then after that um, we're basically done adjusting the um the the pointers or the references but remember uh, not only do these two references change but also the height change right because well, uh, the, 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 the the no B kind of becomes used to, that used to be the child of the root now becomes the parent. So their the height change. So we're gonna adjust the the height of the the O root and also the height of the O root's um, left child. Now the question for you to kind of think about is can I do this the other way around can I adjust you know the the left child the left child's height before I adjust the O roots height so think about that um, 
And then finally, uh, as usual, uh, all of the uh, our methods that change the um, the structure of the subtree, it has to return the new root of the subtree, right? Potentially new root, and well, actually, I think in this case, it's guaranteed to be a new root because we always bring up, um, yeah, the left child of the old root. So here is our new root, and and it's you know no b is pointed to by lc. So that's what we're returning. So keep in mind that uh, the right rotation is just one of the four cases that we discussed, right? And um, and it's only we only do the rotation if the AVL tree invariant has been violated after the insertion. So then the question is, you know, we're not doing this all the time. Then when do we actually do it? And that's when the invariant no longer holds. Well, it should be relatively straightforward. I hope that is um, so. We know that um, the invariant is violated when the uh, when the left when the height of the left subtree is different from the height of the right subtree by more than one. Right. So here. Um, and by the way, this is we we are in the in the in a rotate method now. Um, we'll, I'll show you in a bit when to call the rotate method. But inside the rotate, we're going to have to do four different types of rotation. Okay. But now we're going to just do the right rotation, and we'll only do the right rotation when the height difference is bigger than one. And also, we do the right rotation only if the left subtree is higher than the right subtree, right? If it's the other way, then, then we do the left rotation instead. And another thing I want to point out is obviously, even if this is the case, um, we don't always do the right rotation only because uh, we also, this is for the uh, left, left case. Uh, if it's the left, right case, will have to do the double rotation. So even this part is not quite complete, but you know we wrote one thing, let's just see if it works. So as I just said, rotate is going to eventually, you're going to have to eventually write it to do, to handle all four cases depending on certain height conditions. Now, when do we call rotate? Well, we have to rotate after we do the insertion. So there we go. We um, in in single underscore insert after we insert after we adjust the height now we do the rotation so we think this is all that it takes to do to handle the left left case to do the right rotation so we should test it right um, so I've already wrote a little bit of the test code to test it and let me actually show you the test case that I'm I'm testing here is very simple is the one that you see um, uh, so many times by now that this is the tree I'm creating, right? Um, that I insert three first and then two and then one. So in the ordinary binary search tree, this is the tree that we're going to end up with. However, since it's an AVL tree, we're going to expect that um, by, by the end of the insert of all three numbers, the tree is going to look like this with the two as the root node and then one on the left child and the number three as the right child and then we'll you know just as a sanity check we we'll also make sure the height the height at the root number two should be one and the left child and the right child it should be all zeros so let's actually try to run this i already typed it out in let me run it and it's okay it passed and yeah it passed the rotation right left left case <laughs> okay and uh, if you need a little more convincing uh remember when we used to print out the the tree that was constructed in the setup function uh it looks like this right 23 and then a41 and on the right su uh, subtree it's just 42 so uh, obviously this is in balance 841 and um, 
in it, it, this requires a this is the left left case and this is a requires a rotation to the right so now that we've implemented ro right rotation and if we run the same test again and we see that um, in this tree um, it's it's being this subtree has been balanced and uh, finally now that we've um, implemented one thing for the AVL tree we should kind of you know do a quick check of you know we make the rest of the things it still it still works we didn't break anything for the binary search tree so we can um, just run all the, all the all the test cases and all of them all of them are still good so that's great that's exactly what we want so for this week's assignment you're asked to implement the rest of the uh, AVL trees and test it thoroughly so since we already have the single right rotation it's uh, kind of natural to do the single left rotation it should be um, you know fairly similar the important thing is remember to draw pictures you would not be able to um, implement the left rotation without drawing pictures and then once you have the left ro uh, rotation and the next thing is the two double rotations and um, just a hint here but you should know this already that you know double rotations they are just composed of two single rotations in different directions at different heights so should be fairly straightforward if you write if you find yourself writing many lines of code uh, you're probably overdoing something or overthinking it okay and uh, well once you have all these rotations then you have you have to update the um, the rotate function to you know make sure you um, use the correct type of rotation given the uh, the right conditions okay and then once you handle um, the the you know once you balance the tree uh, during insertion you also need to balance it during uh, removal as well and then finally um, in the test one of the tests that, that you're going to be asked to write is to actually to, to write test code to walk through any any tree to make sure it is an AVL tree um, you know that that the heights are calculated properly as well as the AVL uh, tree invariant is satisfied at every single node and then finally as we just did um, all of the rest of the BSD tests should still uh, work because again, AVL tree is a BSD tree.